All right, let's talk about multiplicities. So as you guys know, a given matrix is going to have some eigenvalues. And then the new thing is each eigenvalue is going to have an algebraic multiplicity and a geometric multiplicity. And so think to yourselves, when is the last time you've heard the term multiplicity before? It was probably back in your algebra class, maybe in high school, because you had things like, let's say you had some quadratic function and you plotted it and it looks like like this, right? And it had a, uh, it had the um, one root, right? And it just barely touched the x-axis. And then you think, well, the fundamental theorem of algebra says that an nth order polynomial has to have n uh, roots, counting for multiplicity. So when you had a case like this, where it just barely touched the x-axis, you called this solution, this root, a repeated solution, and you said it had a multiplicity of two. So that concept is going to apply here and that's going to be what we call the algebraic multiplicity so let's see that in action so this practice problem I came up with has two matrices a and B and the problem says find all the eigenvalues for each matrix and then find their corresponding algebraic and geometric multiplicities so let's find the algebraic multiplicity of of each eigenvalue of a first so for a we want to find the determinant of a minus uh, lambda I that's how we're going to find our eigenvalues so we have 1 minus lambda, 0, 0, 1 minus lambda. We set that equal to 0. And then so then our characteristic polynomial would be 1 minus lambda squared equals 0, right? And you see this squared here means that this factor of the po characteristic polynomial is repeated. And so the eigenvalue of 1, we say, has an algebraic multiplicity of 2, right? Remember, it's that repeated solution kind of thing. So this only has one eigenvalue, right? So the only eigenvalue for a is lambda equals one, and we can say with algebraic multiplicity two, right? Because it's repeated twice. Okay, that's that's how you find algebraic multiplicity. Very straightforward. The new stuff is this whole geometric multiplicity thing. So what what could that possibly mean? Well, strictly speaking. The geometric multiplicity of an eigenvalue is the dimension of that eigenvalue's eigenspace. So I'm going to tell you this, and you probably saw it in the title. I'm going to tell you this dirty uh, shortcut that's like really easy and it's <laughs> really interesting. Uh, but before I get to that, uh, let's do this justice and then explain what is geometric multiplicity really, and then you can apply, and then you can, then you deserve to use the, use and apply the, shortcut okay so geometric multiplicity like i said is the dimension of the eigenspace so for lambda equals one what is that what is the one eigenspace in this case well the transformation that we're talking about is multiplying by this standard matrix one zero zero one and what does that do well it's just the identity matrix so it doesn't change it so if you input some vector like this say you input the vector into this transformation you input the vector 4, 3, for example. Well, what do you get as your output? You get the same vector, 4, 3, right? So this is an eigenvector with eigenvalue 1. It's clear to see by definition this eigenvector with eigenvalue 1. But it didn't matter what we inputted. Any input would get us an output, which is just 1 times the input. You can test that, right? 1, 0, 0, 1 times negative 2, 1, for example. It's just negative 2, 1. So the one eigenspace, meaning the subspace of vectors that have that are eigenvectors with eigenvalue one, is any vector in this xy plane. And so the one eigenspace is two dimensional. So we say that geometric multiplicity of lambda equals one is two. And so now we can add that with geometric multiplicity two as well. Now, okay, buckle in, here's the shortcut. Um, here we go. Geometric multiplicity is the number of free variables in A minus lambda I. Okay, so let's test that. We have A, remember, is just, we were, we were working with this guy. So A minus lambda I we found lambda equals 1. A minus lambda i is 
zero, 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 zero. Okay, how many free variables? Two. So the geometric multiplicity of lambda equals one is two. Let's do that other example where we had our, our matrix B is one, one, zero, one. Um, I didn't do it for the first matrix, but if you remember, you don't have to go through that whole like determinant of A minus lambda I N set it equal to zero when you have an upper triangular matrix like this, because um, you can just read off the eigenvalues along the main diagonal when it's upper triangular. So the only eigenvalue for B, again, is just one. But what's its algebraic multiplicity? Its algebraic multiplicity is two again. You can see that one appears twice in the main diagonal. It's a repeated solution to the characteristic polynomial set equal to zero. So you can say lambda equals one with an algebraic multiplicity, again, of two. And then with geometric multiplicity of what? Well, let's apply our shortcut. B minus lambda I is zero, one, zero, zero. And how many free variables do we have? Now we only have one free variable. So the geometric multiplicity is one. So this is gonna work all the time. You might, if it's a big three by three matrix, you might have to do some row reduction to find how many free variables you have. I don't know, but let's just do this justice and then like think about it some more. The, the geometric multiplicity. So B is this matrix here. So what does that linear transformation look like when we have B as our standard matrix? Well, this is just gonna be a shear, right? So we like input a vector up here. If this is the vector zero, one, then the output would be uh, one, one. So it kind of shears all the vectors, you know, kind of like that, I guess. <laughs> uh, so now the eigenspace, so the vectors that are just eigenvectors with eigenvalue one are now just gonna be on the x-axis. So let's let's think about that a little more. If we input the vector, a vector on the x-axis, like three, zero, do you agree that we would just get out three, zero if you do this matrix vector multiplication? And then do you agree that I could put any any vector that has a zero as the second entry and I would get the same as my output and input? So that means any vector on the x-axis is an eigenvector with eigenvalue one which means that the one eigenspace is just the x-axis. So the one eigenspace is one dimensional. That's the definition of geometric multiplicity, the dimension of the eigenspace, right? Because for example, one, one, zero, one times a vector not on the x-axis, like one, one gets you the vector um, two, one. And you can see the vector one, one is not an eigenvector because it's not being scaled by some number. So, um, the eigenspace is now only one dimensional, it's the x-axis. So the geometric multiplicity is now just one. Um, so if you if you notice, the geometric multiplicity is never bigger than the algebraic multiplicity in, in these two examples, and it's a theorem that it, it will never be. So quick theorem that you guys should know. Algebraic multiplicity is always greater than or equal to the geometric multiplicity. Right In the case, so here's a little teaser, in the case where the geometric multiplicity equals the algebraic multiplicity for all eigenvalues, you have a diagonalizable matrix. Okay, more to come on that later. Just wanted to get your feet wet.